So as you can see, I'm up pretty early this morning and that's because I wanna go and try and do something that I haven't done before. And that's try and paint the morning light as the sun rises. And we're not gonna go too far afield today, just out the back of our field actually. So let's go and find a good place to get set up. So it's a beautiful morning this morning. There's a kind of freezing fog lying really low across the fields, which could be really nice if I could try and get that into the painting. So I'm thinking about going for something like this over here, finding some interesting parts in the landscape. As you can see, my viewfinder is on its last legs. Today I'm going to be focusing on speed and accuracy because the light is changing so fast that I'm going to have to work as fast as I can. But I also want to be as accurate as I can. So, uh, here goes. All right, so I'm going to try and tone this canvas with a bit of ultramarine blue, dioxazine purple, Naples yellow, and some titanium white. It's just to take that whiteness off the panel, really, so I can judge the mid-tones and the darks a bit better. And as you can see, the light has changed so much already. The sun's just come up over here now. So I think I'll go for a fairly high horizon, start up around here somewhere. Hang on a minute, I'm supposed to be doing this fast, aren't I? Better hurry up a bit. Quite like the way that field over there folds down into that one, so I'm gonna bring that in over here. Yeah, that's okay for now. And as I said, I'm going to be really concentrating on matching the colour today. So I've just mixed up a bit of dark with this burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, and alizarin crimson. And as you can see, it's pretty dark. So I'm just going to take it on my palette knife and hold it right up to where I think it should be in the background there. And I can see that's way too dark already. So I'm going to have to bring in some Naples yellow and titanium white to change that up. Havam, Daddy. Havam, yeah. Yeah, he's cold. He's cold, yeah. And I've got a little friend with me as well who's woken up early. Yeah. I think I'll bring in some dioxazine purple as well. That seems to push things in the distance a little bit further out, so I'm going to try that out. A bit of titanium white. Oh, that's still way too dark, I think. Yeah, the value's getting there, I think, but it's just not quite the right colour, but that doesn't matter so much at the moment. I can always change that later, as long as I get the value right to begin with. I can always lighten areas up as I go. I just want to get these areas blocked in for now. Oh, that's interesting. The uh, paint is actually mixing with the thinner that I put down in the wash in the background. I might just leave that for now and see what happens. All right, trying to quickly move on now and look at this area here where the light is coming across into this field over here. So making up a kind of grey, mauvey colour using some Naples yellow, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson and some titanium white. That's also mixing with the thinner now, so it's, it's kind of really making quite a wash, but that's okay. Got to try these things out, experiment a bit and see what happens. Wow, it's really challenging with the light changing all the time. So I'm just choosing certain areas as they are now and just going with that because it's changing so quickly. Look how far the sun's come up already. As you can see, I've got just various different mixes up here. I've got this kind of darker yellow ochre colour and then I've kind of graded it up slightly with a bit of titanium white and Naples yellow. And also got this darker mix, which I keep dipping into now and again as well, just to see what I can try and match colour-wise with this mix. Ah, oh, man, it keeps changing. Everything keeps changing in front of me. It's actually really, really quite difficult to do this. 
Ah, a bit frustrating, but um, I suppose you just got to try and go with it a little bit. Not, not much you can do about that. Just trying to keep the brush strokes pretty loose here so that the eye is drawn in a bit further to this detailed area. Maybe get a little bit of contrast coming across here with that darker area here. Provide a bit of interest in the foreground. What I'm also trying to do with this painting is go a lot lighter than I normally do with the colours because when I've got them outdoors, when I'm painting them, they look really bright and then I take them inside and they just look so dark. So I'm just trying to um, lighten the colours up a bit and holding up my palette knife so that I can actually check against what I can see instead of trying to match it by eye. So I'm actually just wiping out some areas on the panel where I can see that light pattern coming across here. Oh, I think I put a bit too much thinner on the background there. It's really difficult to work with at the moment. I'm going to have to watch that in the future, I think. It's all run up here, look. That's not so good. I have to say this is actually quite difficult to do this today. It's um, really challenging with the light changing the whole time. Yes, definitely a real challenge, this one. The light's changing the whole time and I've got way too much thinner in the background so everything's just running down. But uh, <laughs> it doesn't always go according to plan obviously but maybe I can make something good out of it. Ah, oh, it's dripping all over the place along here now, look. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, to be honest, right now I just feel like giving up because it's uh, it's really not going as I thought it would, but um, you got to keep going, I suppose. All right, trying to think positively. I think the colours are okay. I think the feel of it is pretty nice. I think I just feel like I'm a bit out of control with it and uh, I don't really like that. So, uh, but maybe it's a good thing. Maybe you got to go with that a little bit sometimes and see and go with it a little bit more. What do you think, Ella? Good. Ah. All right, so this is the latest thing that's happened now. The fog has completely rolled in and I actually can't see a thing. But you know what? Maybe I could just do a, maybe I could just do a foggy picture. Maybe I could just go with it as it is now. See how I get on. So this is where we're at at the moment with this drippy, foggy, misty, I don't know what kind of painting, but um, is absolutely not what I expected it to be and um, is challenging me a lot, actually. But if all else fails, what I can do is I can finish this indoors and kind of sort out the drippiness once it's dried a bit. All right, so I decided to come back inside into the studio with the painting because uh, it was just so foggy out there I couldn't see a thing and the painting was just becoming a drippy mess so uh, I thought I'd bring it inside and see what I can get out of it. You can see it's dried off quite a bit now but the thinner has really made the paint run quite a bit so I'm going to try and rescue it somehow and try and make a decent painting out of it and what I've done is I've taken a screenshot from the video so I can use that as a reference but I'm going to try and do a mix of this photo and what I remember from outside so I can get a kind of mix between plein air and uh, photo. So we'll see how that goes. So I'm just removing any excess wet paint that's still left on the panel so that I have a nice surface to paint on. And also now looking at the horizon, trying to define that with some darks that I've uh, mixed up. And it was actually one of you subscribers that asked me to do this walkthrough of how I changed the painting 
in the studio after I get back in from plain air. So thanks a lot to Biro 1985. And I've actually decided to bring in some greens and dark blues and reds in this foreground because I want the eye to go further into the painting. So I'm using the reference photo to see how dark I need to go with the foreground here. Just keeping my brush strokes loose. So that the eye goes further into the painting. Also just adding small details like this line here that will add some perspective and make it look as if the background is further away. Just adding in some trees here as a little detail and also to try and enhance that sense of atmospheric perspective. All right, I feel like I've got to a place where I can stop now with the painting. And uh, as you can see, it's very, it's very, very different to what I started with. The reason for that is because that I could see on the image on my computer that there was a really nice feel to having a darker, a darker foreground and then having the, the sky lighter and then using the sky as a kind of focus for the painting. And as I said before, I was trying to get a balance between what I experienced when I was outside and the reference image that I used to paint inside with. I also had a decision to make as well about the sky because I'd actually mixed up some yellow here that I was going to put into the sky as it is in the reference photo. But I actually ended up keeping the white sky as I felt like it actually complemented the foreground. I also wanted to recreate that fogginess that was out there at the time. So and I thought that worked pretty well. So after thinking I completely messed up that painting outside with all that fog and drippiness that was going on, it's actually quite nice to realize that you can paint outside and get inspired by the light and the surroundings, but then also just bring it inside afterwards and finish it off. So I definitely learnt a lot from that experience anyway, and uh, I think it will help me in the future with my other paintings. Well, thanks for sticking around throughout all the fogginess and all that, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.